other people, how are you doing? So, after a long time, we finally have the review for the S21 Ultra. Now, I took all this time because there have been a lot of camera comparisons, both photography and videography. And alongside that, I also did a software review and a camera review. It's all out there on the channel. You can check it out whenever you want. But this, I would consider the review to be basically a consolidation or a compilation of all the things that are interesting about this phone. Now there are undoubtedly a lot of things to talk about when it comes to the S21 Ultra, but I do want to get the easier things out of the way first. So starting off with the design. Well, unquestionably, this design is the best I've ever held when it comes to a smartphone. I can say that with ease because, you know, I have a personal bias towards this form of design, you know, a bold, more unique looking designs. Let's face it, how many smartphones have you held which have their cameras, like multiple cameras encased in metal? I personally haven't. Like this is my first smartphone which has this crazy design and it blows my mind in a very, very good way. So yes, the question of design has an easy answer. I personally love it and you know, it's also very easy to hold as a matter of fact because I've been using the Note 20 Ultra up until now and you know, I, I really like boxy corners and I personally feel like the Note with the square of design is awesome but yeah, holding the S21 Ultra is definitely a little bit easier. So with the design out of the way, unquestionably just amazing. Also, the screen curves are perfect in my opinion. It is just the right minimal amount of curve to avoid any problems whatsoever but also delivering on the premium look that people want from such ultra smartphones. Next up the display. Again, an easy answer here as well. This display is essentially everything you could have ever asked for from any Samsung device basically because Samsung is known for fantastic displays and last year it wasn't that amazing because you know some features were missing but that's not the case now. We have 1440p at 120Hz just it's unbelievably amazing. It doesn't really make a huge difference like when you're looking at content except for YouTube. YouTube definitely benefits from having 1440p but other than that I haven't seen any visual difference but you know from a psychological standpoint almost I almost uh, I almost sound like a freaking therapist here but anyways from a psychological standpoint having 1440p at 120hz it just makes you feel like you are actually using an ultra device, you know, you're getting your money's worth in a manner of speaking again. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but in a way it does. So with all that said, one feature that I wish Samsung had had was 10-bit color. That was something I was looking forward to for the S21 Ultra because Samsung already has some of the best HDR in the market except for Dolby Vision. We don't have Dolby Vision on this one. Other than that, HDR and HDR10 Plus are both present. They look amazing as you'd expect. A 10-bit color helps out in HDR as some of you might know. It helps out give us very beautiful smooth color gradients and it, it looks awesome in HDR. But we do not have that here. Now it doesn't make a huge difference but there are in certain places you'll see color banding and artifacting when you're playing back HDR. So yeah. A small downside compared to some of the other displays out there but other than that I have no complaints this display is easily easily one of my favorites out there now that was the hardware incredible as you'd expect you're paying a lot of money $1,200 for this device which is actually lower than the launch price of last year's Galaxy S20 Ultra but we'll get to that other than that the S21 Ultra has an incredible software experience as well with One UI. I think One UI is easily one of the best software skins out there. I mean, personally, I prefer it even over something like Oxygen OS. That's simply because it has more customization, while Oxygen OS has a more stock like feel. And One UI is incredible when it comes to customization. I've made a whole video about how Good Luck, it's Samsung's official app for customizations. It just, it's amazing. Just, I, I basically have no other word for it. It's incredible just how much you can do in the software itself. And now we also have Google Feed built in. So yeah, it's basically rounded out all of the harsh edges and it's incredible right now. Always on display, one of my favorites as well. And lastly, 
some software optimizations and hardware changes as well. I think they have altogether helped out make the S21 Ultra feel a lot smoother. With 120Hz enabled, I think that the animations and transitions, they are a lot more refined and they feel smoother as compared to say the Note 20 Ultra from last year. The refresh rate is the same but it's definitely noticeable, that much I can tell you right now. This does feel slightly smoother compared to last year's Samsung's very own flagships. That's quite something if you ask me. Now jumping over to the cameras, well again I have made the full camera review, I talked a lot more in depth in terms of the camera and you know the software features that we have, single take actors mode and all that, but in a nutshell these cameras are incredible like I've used this for photography and videos in numerous camera comparisons and even while I'm using the phone on the daily. This one is basically the epitome of refinement when it comes to Samsung cameras as a whole because if you look at Samsung cameras, well, we usually have a ton of features but the refinement, the consistency, that is quite often lacking. Like, you know, if you look at skin tones and it's usually a major issue when it came to Samsung cameras but now, things have changed. I can quite easily say that the selfie camera on the S21 Ultra is basically one of the if not the best selfie camera that I've ever used because when you turn off beauty mode it is on by default but if you turn it off it actually turns off this time because even if you turn it off on the Note 20 Ultra let's say you'd still get some skin smoothing that's not the case here you'll get every little detail that this camera can possibly give you and that's incredible I personally feel like that was the right way to go and Samsung made an amazing decision but yeah, there are issues here as well, like portrait mode on the rear cameras. The image quality in portrait mode is fantastic, as you'd expect. This is a flagship Samsung device with numerous improvements to skin tone rendering and all that. It's amazing. At 1x zoom, it looks very nice, very detailed, very good edge detection and all that. But when you want to zoom in and you want to take zoomed in photos with portrait mode on, well, then this camera doesn't use the three times zoom that we have here, three times optical zoom. Why it does that? Uh, I, I don't know. Because the feature wasn't present and that initially just blows my mind. I mean, you have a very nice three times optical zoom right here, why not use it? But it hasn't even been fixed with the software update, so I'm not entirely sure what the issue here is why we do not get three times zoom three times optical zoom rather on zoomed in portraits and instead we have to use digital zoom that doesn't look good and i personally don't care much about it but it is a weird issue which is why i'm mentioning it it doesn't really make sense that's what bothers me more than anything else but anyways that's just how it is now another problem i had noticed and this one is in video is that when you're taking low light or sometimes even backlit video well if the camera is moving a lot and you know the subject is moving a lot well, I see a ton of smearing and I'm not entirely sure what is the cause of this is it some problem with the shutter speed or the noise reduction could be either of those two I'd wager on the noise reduction being a real problem here because this issue wasn't present on any of the earlier Galaxy devices like the Note 20 Ultra or even the S20 series I don't know why it's present here though but it is and it's not really been fixed or anything i'm not sure if it can be fixed even it's definitely an issue that plagues all of the s20 ultras not just the exynos version just to be clear about it and yeah these two are essentially my biggest issues here i mean to be honest that's that says that this camera is refined beyond anything else because the number of options and modes of versatility that you have for this camera it's incredible and the fact that I have only two major issues as a whole, well that's that's quite something if you ask me. I mean Samsung definitely did a great job in terms of making this camera feel very consistent essentially. Now battery life and performance. Yeah this, this is one area where Samsung has been plagued with issues and problems, especially last year with their Exynos 990 chipset. It was horrible for them. Like, man. 
but this time around we have the Exynos 2100. It's apparently a huge jump and it differentiates itself from what the Exynos 990 was and what it represented, just a lower tier chipset in flagships that should not have happened. But this time, the Exynos 2100 basically addresses majority of the problems. Not everything though, majority. Like peak performance for example, like when you need the absolute highest level of performance from say a CPU GPU, then you can get essentially the similar amount or magnitude of performance from both the Snapdragon and Exynos variants, that's just how it is now. But if you are really gonna drive this chipset to its absolute limits, let's say you're playing this one game or you wanna run consistent benchmarks over and over, well then the Exynos still has the hitting issues. That has not been addressed, that much I can tell you right now. The efficiency of this chipset is not nearly as good as the Snapdragon variants. The Snapdragon 888 is unquestionably better when it comes to managing heat and maintaining higher levels of performance as a whole. Like I can blatantly say that it's a major issue that Samsung still needs to fix. It's still quite a plague on this device and for some it might be a problem. I can say that right away but for people who are kind of like me who don't usually play a lot of games or they don't really need sustained peak performance for the absolute longest periods of time, well, for them this phone is more than good enough. And then, the battery. Well, this was a problem last year. The battery life on like the Note 20 Ultra or even the S20 series, it was pretty much horrible compared to what the Snapdragon variants could achieve. Usually it was like six to six and a half hours on the Snapdragon variants, whereas on the Exynos variants, we couldn't even reach the six hours time. Now that's not even a problem. The Exynos 2100 is definitely power efficient enough to get to six and a half hours. And like, if you want to use it as a low to medium use case, well then you're going to get easily seven hours and that essentially means you can get a day and a half, maybe even push for two days. The standby time is not the greatest in the world, I think that crown still goes to iPhones, but nonetheless, standby time is fine, but the overall battery efficiency is amazing, especially if you tie into all of this, the much more efficient display we have here, the dynamic 120Hz definitely helps a lot in terms of keeping the battery alive for way longer. So yeah, battery life is amazing. I get six to six and a half hours on medium to heavy usage and if in case i just wanted to view some content on this one well then it would quite easily edge all the way towards seven hours now i didn't use it for that long but it could do it if i really needed to go for seven hours so as a whole how good is the s21 ultra even i personally feel like the way samsung has designed and made this device well it basically defines ultra in many ways like the screen for example it essentially gives you everything you could have asked for the cameras again except for the two little issues that i had everything else was essentially perfect and the design yeah this is a way to go for a premium 1200 dollar device so yeah is it worth it i think it is I think, I think this phone is finally worth the $1,000 plus price tag that we have had from last year. Now obviously this is the first phone for 2021, there are other phones coming out. We have the Vivo X60 Pro Plus, that's obviously going to be a very interesting device, I'm raring to go for that one. And then we have the OnePlus 9 Pro coming up as well, they have this Zeiss partnership and yeah, I cannot even wait to test out those cameras against this one. This one has a slightly rocky road ahead, you know, it already has certain issues that are not gonna be a problem for other devices like the OnePlus 9 Pro, for example, the heating issue. So yeah, we'll see how it performs later on down the road because for 2021, it has a great start, but how it performs later on is gonna be a little bit more interesting if you ask me. But for now, I can recommend this. I can quite easily say that if you wanna go for this, and you know you don't have too much problem with the small little issues i mentioned here and there then you're gonna more than enjoy your time with this one it's definitely worth it so with that said i hope you guys enjoyed if you did do it that like button subscribe if you're already and i will be seeing you guys later cheers